everybody. Festool introduced the first Traxar in 1980. And Traxars are quickly becoming must-have tools because of their ability to make long, precise cuts better than table saws and circular saws. This year, Milwaukee became the last major tool company to come out with a Traxar. Cordless Traxar, not corded. In defense, of the folks at Milwaukee like to say that they believe in doing the right tools at the right time. So after seeing everybody else do it and hearing about user criticisms and pain points and stuff, we have two questions. A, did Milwaukee get it right? And B, did they achieve disruptive innovation? Which is what they always talk about, their mantra. I'll address that at the end of the article, but the short answer is yes, they got it right. Though I'd be really ashamed of them if they didn't with all the time that they took, right? They paid attention and heard users echo similar pain points across the board on other brand track saws and they strategically addressed them. Some of those major pain points, we all, we all know what they are, that they addressed were underpowered motors, the need to have two batteries to power the saw, a battery placement was awkward or difficult to access or maybe interacted negatively with performance, and then that famous awkward plunge mechanism. The response to these five user pain points was to focus on a Milwaukee M18 saw that A, had the ability to operate on one battery, B, was powerful, one of the most powerful ones, C, make consistent, repeatable, accurate cuts, because that's what we want in a track saw. And then uh, D, offer uh, many features and finally have a robust design. So let's talk about power. The Milwaukee track saw weighs 9.8 pounds and has a variable speed. The motor can be adjusted with a variable speed switch from 2,500 uh, to 5,600 RPMs. Its motor was specifically designed as a track saw, not as a repurposed circular saw. In fact, it has unique copper windings that directly affect the saw's RPMs when combined with their six amp hour heavy duty battery that they, they mated for this saw. It's perfect mate, gives it corded power. When testing the M18 saw for cutting power, we wanted to use hardwood that was known for its hardness and, and stuff in the region that we use. When determining hardness of wood, of hardwood, we often recur, refer to the Jenka scale. The hardness of a wood is rated on an industry standard and it's known as the Jenka test and that measures the force required to embed an 11 millimeter steel ball into the wood by half its diameter. Now for us, as carpenters, we refer to this test with our clients, kind of to educate, educate clients when talking about denting and wear and tear on hardwood flooring and maybe wood decking. It's also a good indicator to show how the wood will affect your cutting tools, your blades, stuff like that. So here in the, in the shop, we tested the M18 saw and we cut three quarter hardwood Ipe mahogany maple and an inch and a half poplar, which is a common hardwood that we all encounter. We also cut three quarter inch purple hard. Now, the saw had zero issues cutting any of these hardwoods and it, its motor didn't bog down on any of them. No issues, cut it with ease. I was curious though, how did the Milwaukee saw work comparing to my Makita track saw, which I use in the field, as well as um, we have a Festool uh, corded one here in the shop. We have the TS55 FEQ. And I wanted to use the Festool corded saw as a benchmark. For this comparison, I installed basically all new 40 tooth blades, uh, six and a half inch blades on all of the saws. And basically made a series of cuts through three quarter purple, uh, purple hard and the inch and a half poplar, we cut some EPE with it. Uh, the purple hard wood is rated at 1860 on the Jenka scale, it's pretty hard. Poplar has a rating of 540, just to kind of give you a comparison, but it was twice the thickness. We ran each saw through the purple heart using the sound of the motor to kind of guide my, uh, our push rate. The corded Festool clearly was more powerful when cutting the three-quarter material, but not so much in the inch and a half material, which was interesting. When cutting the inch and a half poplar, there was no discernible differences in the motor strain or resistance when pushing the saw between the corded Festool or the cordless Milwaukee. Both saws cut at the same rate and resistance. We did note um, a difference between the 36 volt two battery Makita and the 18 volt one battery Milwaukee. Milwaukee was slightly more powerful on the Purple Heart and clearly more powerful on the inch and a half poplar. Moving on to precision, track saws need to be precise, accurate, repeatable, precise. We found the track saw accurate out of the box at 90 and 45 degrees. Additionally, the saw's blade lines up perfectly with the splinter guide on the track. It doesn't cut the track when you go to 45. That's important. Uh, we've seen this with other saws and it's a frustrating pain point for us. 
As far as the track and blade compatibility, Milwaukee was smart here. They designed basically the saw to be compatible with other manufacturers. The saw fits on the Festool and the Makita track. And they put a six and a half blade with a 20 millimeter arbor to be consistent with all other track saws so that the blades can work and, 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 and it just fits perfect. It makes sense for users that may decide that the Milwaukee saw is maybe nicer than the saw they have or they're replacing a saw. It allows them to switch saws without having to purchase Milwaukee tracks. They can use the tracks they have. Very smart move on their part. Now by using a six and a half blade, they, cut, they can cut two by material while their direct competitor Festool with their six and a quarter blade cannot. They can cut right through. Um, one nice safety feature on the SAR is their anti-tip knob. Not a new feature, but the knob um, works great when keeping the SAR secured in the track when it's set at a bevel. The track adjustment cams that keep the SAR snug on the track, they work beautifully as well, very similar to the other SAWs. Um, and it worked on the Festool Makita track as well. So it, it, it rides nicely and snugs things up. We did have a slight issue um, when doing other manuf uh, when when combining other manufacturer tracks, for example, the Festool track, when combined with the um, Milwaukee, has different tolerances on the track, and this impacts the saw's track tensioner. So as the saw leaves that Milwaukee track and, and comes onto the Festool track, you have to adjust the tension a little bit. Additionally, um, we are unable to use the anti-tip feature once we get onto the Festool track. It just doesn't work. The Milwaukee track, like other tracks, has a non-slip grip that, on the bottom that works great. It's compatible uh, with standard track clamps. Um, the Milwaukee tr um, track clamps are robust and heavy. Uh, they're approximately an inch deeper and taller than my Festool clamps. To combine tracks together, the Milwaukee tracks together, there are two track connection, connection bars that mount the, on the top and the bottom of the track. Uh, very similar to the Festool's new track setup. And we found these connections, because they're opposing each other as well, they work exceptionally well, no issues, they slide easy, it's, it's, it's easy peasy. Um, as far as the track lengths, they come in three different lengths, 31 inch, 55 and 106 inch guardrail tracks. Um, we're talking about, about the rail tension knobs for a second. Uh, like all track saws, the two rail tension knobs, they basically keep the, the saw snug on the track. These knobs work well on the Milwaukee track, like I said, and also work on the Makita and the Festool. The, um, the bars on the bottom of the saw, so the, the saw has a magnesium shoe plate and there's a set of replaceable rail tension bars with screws on the bottom of the saw. And Milwaukee observed that some of the competitors only used metal on the bottom and that can considerably wear over time to the point that they, they, they can't be adjusted snug anymore over time when you, when you get a lot of wear and tear. So they found that by using plastic, they eliminated a failure point on the saw and the plastic reacted better with the aluminum rails. In my opinion, by making them serviceable and replaceable, Milwaukee eliminated a potential failure point. You know, now it's just a replaceable part versus a whole shoe plate. Also worthy of noting is that the saw's magnesium plate can be removed and replaced if you drop or damage the saw. But I will note that you, you don't want to do this and Milwaukee doesn't advise that you do this on the user end because uh, it requires a shop specific fixture to achieve correct alignment and calibration. Um, all right, depth of cut. At 90 degrees, the saw will cut two and a quarter inches. At 45, it'll cut an inch and five eighths, compared to an inch and seven sixteenths on the Festool. The bevel range goes from negative one degree to 48 degrees. Let's see, uh, dust collection. We started looking at the Milwaukee track saw, and our, our dust collection performance hypothesis was that the window designed to change the blade would rob airflow from the vacuum and thus reducing, you know, dust extraction efficiency. So um, part of that hypothesis, hypothesis was we took several videos cutting at different length materials, first with the uh, window open and then with some blue tape covering it. Um, and we thought we had a story here, but we evaluated the dust left on the table and, and looking at the difference, it was negligible. It wasn't worth, there's no story there to tell you. Bottom line is you're going to get good results when using the saw with a vacuum, period. Um, the M18 track saw has some unique geometry actually designed into the inside of their blade guard, and that's to assist with airflow and reduce friction to achieve more efficient dust collection. Milwaukee actually set out to find out how to move dust more effectively from the tip of the blade to the dust board, right? So 
they conducted airflow analysis. They studied slow motion video of dust particulate and inertia and uh, dust inertia. And they looked at competitor saws and they basically arrived at their blade guard uh, dust port design and location. The dust port, it's a pretty common port. It fits one seven eighths inch. Um, most vacuums fit standard vacuums really well. My Festool vacuum fits on this dust port nicely. Uh, Milwaukee also offers an, a, um, a clamping vacuum adapter that can replace the dust port. And this clamp adapter is smaller and it's meant specifically to use like say with their M18 backpack vacuum uh, and some of their other vacuums. It's nice though because it clicks on. Dust collection, however, is one area where I feel Milwaukee dropped the ball. And this is a perfect place for them to add Bluetooth functionality to their vacuums and to their saw. Unfortunately, the only option right now from Milwaukee is to use their universal wireless dust control adapter and remote control kit, which is like a dongle and a wall outlet thing, uh, or use a competitor vacuum and setup. In my shop, I use the Festool Bluetooth remote control and CT dust extractor. In the field, I do not have a Bluetooth solution yet. One of my guys uses the Makita stuff, but I don't. I'm guessing when Milwaukee takes a second swing at this track saw, we'll see some Bluetooth technology. I just wish they had done it this time. They had time, they should have done it. Um, we tested the track saw's dust bag, unimpressed. It's like all the other track saw bags. It, it collects dust a little bit, they're not efficient. Uh, fills up quickly, it can clog the tube a little bit if you're not paying attention and, and clear it or empty it. Um, when do I use the bag? I use the bag when I'm making one or two cuts and I'm just too darn lazy to drag out a vacuum. That's when I pull that bag out. Um, the blade viewing guard and splinter guard did seem to help though when we used a dust collector uh, to a vacuum. It seemed, actually seemed to help a lot. So that's something to note. Push it right down. All right, the, the electric brake safety feature on the saw is super fast. Not much more to say about that. I've seen a few saws go around a bit. This one does not. The riving knife is great, uh, great safety feature. It's a uh, spring-loaded riving knife. Um, it's Look, riving knives are great. They're designed to maintain a gap between the board and the cutoff board. Uh, it's gonna prevent the kerf gap from closing and pinching. And basically, once that pinching of the blade happens, that can cause a, a, an initiated kickback. The hole just above the riving knife exposes a star drive screw, and that's going to allow you to adjust your riving knife or remove it if you're doing some sort of a plunge cut. Let's talk a second about the mystery hash marks. What am I talking about? If you look closely, there are some uh, unique marks right at the rear of the saw. There's four of them, and there's some at the front of the saw as well. A lot of tool reviewers online missed the hash marks. They didn't cover it. There are four at the rear, and the ones at, at the front, there's actually, um, they're on the splinter guard and that dust guard that you push down, the, um, the clear dust guard and the black guard. The hash marks are designed to let you see where the saw blade starts and stops to prevent overcutting or when using a plunge cut application. To use the hash marks, you need to line up the front and rear blade position indicators with your cut line. These lines show where the blade will be cut and plunged depending on your depth setting. So first hash mark, the two inner ones, that's set for half inch depth. The next two out, three quarter, the next two out are one inch depth, and the final furthest hash marks on either side are set up for full depth of cut. Interesting, nice, nice feature. Changing the blade on the M18 saw, um, it has a lock off button that basically allows you to flip the switch, lower and lock the saw down. And once you do that, the arbor is exposed in the, in the blade change window. An onboard Allen wrench, which is smartly and tightly securely located right at the top of the, of the um, support handle. All right, let's move on to the saw pivot and plunge mechanism. Now, Milwaukee clearly spent some time working on this, on the spring that, that, that controls the, the pivot and plunge. They obviously heard our feedback on other brands, specifically DeWalt's plunge, which is awkward and not intuitive. And they designed a robust, spring and plunge movement that is smooth and controlled. They got, they clearly got this right. The Milwaukee trigger safety release button that allows the, the power trigger to be actuated, that's centered directly in line with your thumb. If you just grab the handle, put your thumb up, it's right there. Ambidextrous, easy to actuate. Depth of cut and bevel cuts. I already talked about the two and a quarter deep cut at 90 and, and an inch and five eighths at 45. 
and the bevel at uh, negative 1 and 40. The saw bevel is controlled by two thumb knobs, front and back, like many of the track saws, to achieve the negative 1 uh, or the bevel greater than 45, up to 48, there is a um, override slider inside on the base plate. And that basically, you just slide that forward, it allows the saw to click down into the bevel cuts that, that go to negative one or higher. And we found the setting on it really easy and super easy to use. I guess it, I would say it's intuitive, fast, and easy. Now the depth of scale is highly visible and really easy to learn quickly. There are two rows of marks one hash mark and two hash mark. So to figure this out, it just indicates whether you're on or off the track. So the two marks indicate depth of cut on the track. Two hash marks on the track, one hash mark off the track. It's as simple as that. The depth of cut is controlled um, easily by a push in and slide. And then at the top of that, there's a little knob adjustment. It's a depth screw micro adjustment, which is great. All, a lot of track saws have that as well. Now the shoe plate on the saw has indents at the front indicating 90 degrees and uh, 45 degrees when using the saw off the track. And I think I found myself saying, when, when would I use that? When would that be useful? But I, I guess maybe, maybe an example would be making a freehand cut on the floor close to a wall. You can't fit the track, but you need to make a plunge cut into a hardwood floor or something. Now to activate the 22 and a half bevel detent, there's a button at the front of the saw. It's a kind of a spring loaded pull and turn twist button. Um, it just pulls out and rotates. The button is, um, once you figure out, it's easy to use and, and easy to actuate. The uh, Milwaukee M18 has a scoring cut feature too. So this is a feature that I probably could use more when cutting cabinetry and certain veneers. And I don't often do it. I, I just don't think of it sometimes. The button, once activated, only allows the saw to make a, a 1 16th cut into the material you're cutting, which is going to give you a splinter-free cut. Now, battery attachment, the location at first glance on the Milwaukee battery seems like it would interfere with your hand, your support hand, but it doesn't. Milwaukee thought through the battery placement to, one, better balance the tool, uh, as well as access it easily without the tool or the track interfering like other, other saws. The battery also inserts and detaches pretty easy. I've always liked the way they, they detach. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, fit and finish. I didn't have to use this track saw long to get my first impression feeling on fit and finish. Look, the build quality of the saw is robust and it's hard to use without coming up with one word. And, and for me, that word is outstanding. It's, it's just a real sweet tool to use. Accessories on this saw, you can get three different size tracks. They have a nice guide bag, which fits the 31 and the 55 track. Um, they have clamps, joining bars, and five different saw blades that you can get for this track saw. Six and a half inch blades. A 24 tooth general purpose, a 40 tooth finish, a 48 tooth fine finish, a four tooth fiber cement, I think that's carbide, and then a 52 uh, tooth laminate track saw blade. So. Pretty good that they, they've also came up with blades. I just think that's important if you're gonna come up with a saw. Okay, let's move on to price. The Milwaukee track saw sells for $3.99 as a bare tool and $8.59 kitted at the time of this video. The kit comes with a huge packout storage box, six amp hour heavy duty extended battery, rapid charger, the 55 inch track, dust bag, and two clamps. It just comes ready to go. We feel that the saw is priced competi competitively for pro users. Its build quality and feature-rich design basically elevate this saw to a top-tier pricing. Clearly, you get what you pay for. All of these saws, except for the Mafel, all of the track saws, can be purchased at, at Acme Tool, and I'll add a link to this Milwaukee saw in the video description below. As far as warranty goes, I, I don't often talk about warranties on tools because you know it's a long-term thing, and, and sometimes you're dealing with customer service folks or whatever, but some of you folks call me out on it and say I should cover it. Milwaukee is offering a five-year tool and three-year battery warranty on the track saw. I think five years is generous on any cordless tool that is a pro-used tool. Although a track saw probably clearly is not going to see the same use as, a, as maybe my circular saw, recip, or you know, impact driver, but I think five, five years seems kind of right to me. Okay, did they achieve disruptive innovation? I talked about at the beginning of the video. Milwaukee certainly took their time releasing this track saw. While they had plenty of time to build in the best features, great power, precise accuracy, 
I don't think they achieve disruptive innovation. By that I mean Milwaukee's track saw does not solve a pro user's need in such a way that it completely breaks away from what's been done in the past. All they did was look at, copy, and improve on it, right? They did, however, add pro-grade, accurate, well-built, robust track saw to their M18 plat platform, one battery, rounding out their carpentry trade platform nicely. Now, don't get me wrong, this saw is excellent, and it is close to being on par side by side with Festool. Festool has an electronic driving knife, they have Bluetooth capability, Milwaukee does not. So they're close. I guess to conclude, I've seen a lot of comments online about the cost of a track saw, right? Way too expensive. I find it silly if you're a pro user. Not only is the saw close to being on par with Festool, but it's more powerful than their cordless saw. It's less expensive. And here at Toolbox Buzz, we feel that the M18 track saw is priced perfectly for a pro user. It's a pro tool, it's not a DIY saw. Uh, it outshines Ryobi, DeWalt, Makita 100%. And it's better powered than Festool. All right, here's my advice, because I know I'm gonna get asked this in the comments in the video. If you're on the M18 platform and you're looking for a track saw, you gotta get to Milwaukee. It's a no brainer. Don't look anywhere else, perfect. If you're choosing between a Milwaukee and a Makita, get the Milwaukee. If you're on the Festool platform already and invested in that tool and track system, then don't bother switching, you're, you're good. If you're looking at Ryobi or, or um, a DeWalt, you gotta get a Milwaukee. Lastly, if you want the best track saw ever made, take out a loan from the bank and go get them a felt because it's awesome. So my final thoughts on this. As a professional contractor, the M18 saw has made me more efficient and raised the bar, raised the level of my finished cutting quality and comes in at a fair price for a professional tool, professional contractor tool. So well done, Milwaukee. I think you did this right. You took what others did right and wrong and you brought together a well-built, robust, powerful, and really accurate track saw. Now hurry up and get us that Bluetooth dust extraction technology, please. Guys, I'm Rob Robillard. I hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And please subscribe and hit that notification bell right there. It helps with our rankings and, um, and you don't miss any of our content when we put it out. We'll see you next time. Take care.